All right, welcome to the post-game press conference. Southern Miss head coach Scott Berry, Christopher Sargent, first base, went three for four today. Herson Waldrop, starting pitcher, six and two-thirds inning, uh, 11 strikeouts. Coach, just just a quick a quick word just about today's game. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, obviously very disappointed in the outcome of it. Uh, just couldn't put them away there in the ninth inning. You know, we played a really good game up, up to that point. Uh, thought, obviously, Hurston just continued to get – so much better after the third inning. I think he uh, faced, um, set down 11, 11 people in a row before ended up, you know, when we had to pull him there, when he, when he gave up the double in the, uh, in the uh, whatever that inning it was, the seventh inning. So outstanding, outstanding outing by him. He just continued to get stronger and stronger. And, you know, obviously what he was able to do during the course of his uh, outing was to get punch outs, strike people out. We weren't able to do that there late in the game, and and they were able to to foul foul pitches off and extend their at bats, and and uh, you know got to credit LSU for that. You know Christopher Sargent, outstanding day. You know been having a bad back, goes three for four with, for us. Uh, you know with a big home run there that put us up four runs there later in the game, but just wasn't enough to uh, to uh, to win the game today. I will open it up to questions in the audience. Uh, obviously not the result that you wanted, but to to be in front of this crowd in you know in a matchup like this where you know LSU obviously travels well and, and, and your fans pack the place, what was it like to, to play in front of that? You asking me? Or Okay, I'll answer. For me, it was it was unbelievable. I mean, it was just outstanding attendance. Both fan bases were loud, trying to drown each other out. Of course, you know ours, you know, had a lot more than than LSU's. But uh, what a what a great atmosphere it was for for college baseball, for this venue, for for our program, their program, and and where where everybody is right now in regionals, trying to get to uh, to, to Omaha. I, I would hard. I would find it really hard to find another venue that was uh, that had the energy that this one had tonight. Scott, how do you sum up that ninth inning? And also, was it just you guys couldn't get the one pitch that you needed? Just couldn't get the one pitch. You know, I remember several times just them fouling it off until they extended it to where uh, we just couldn't get the punch out. You know, I mean, in all honesty, of course, there was a hit by bat or a hit hit batter in there and there was walks that kind of led to, to some things that, uh, you know, materialized in their favor. But, you know, at the end of the day, we just couldn't put them away. They, they, they put good swings on and hit two home runs there in the ninth inning, uh, you know, two run homer and a solo homer and just the momentum kind of swung their way. Similar vein to the question I asked earlier, obviously Hurston to to pitch in front of a crowd like that, um, you know, what was what was that like? Uh, it's obviously it's something you dream of, like with the game of baseball, and it comes with the game of baseball, the the atmosphere of being in this place, uh, just the Southern Miss fan base, and then having their fan base here. Uh, it's I mean it's a dream to play this game here and have the have everything uh, that we have with this fan base. So we knew it was going to be a lot. Uh, we knew we couldn't let it get to us. Throughout the game, we had to control ourselves and uh, just play baseball like we always do. Scott, obviously, you know you, you lose a game like that. You've got to turn around pretty quick tomorrow. Um, you have concerns, I guess, about the outcome maybe lingering, and, and how do you avoid that? Well, uh, you know, broke it down to them after the game. We've got a choice: we can get up in the morning and feel feel bad, feel sorry, mope around, or we can get up in the morning and understand the challenge that's in front of us, you know, just like we did last year in Oxford when we had to beat Florida State in game one on that Sunday and then turn around and beat host Ole Miss that night to get to that championship game. It's, yeah, it's a tough road. I mean, it is. Um, you know, there's two quality teams that we're going to have to beat. Kennesaw State, you know, being the first one, who's coming off a, a, an emotional win themselves, you know, to stay alive. But their backs are against the wall just like ours. So, you know, we've got to take it one game at a time. We've got to get up in the morning. We've got to understand the challenge. We've got to accept the challenge. And we've got to be mature about the challenge. And, and uh, that's, that's basically what we discussed after the game. 
Hurston, what made the difference for you after the first couple of innings? It seemed like you started pitching ahead in the count instead of behind in the count. Is that it? Yes, sir. I'm, I mean, it's just the adrenaline, uh, the adrenaline rush early. I mean, it's it's hard not getting nervous about games like this. But you know, once you once I settled in and was able to control everything, um, I feel like I was able to control all my pitches for strikes and uh, had confidence on the mound. Whereas early, I may have had a little nerves, but uh, having confidence late in the game. Uh, Scott, if, I feel like what's going to kind of be forgotten is the lineup had a really productive day today. I mean, what was was there any adjustment made between yesterday and today, and how do you get it to carry over? Well, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know as, as far as the adjustment goes. Maybe, you know, it was on the mental side. Yesterday, I, I felt like we just kind of went through the motions. Our bat played like that. But today, you know, we were – we were uh, we had some really great at-bats today. You know, he started off, you know, McGillis with the two-run homer and Peto with a big solo home run. But, you know, you had Sarge gets an inning started, takes wild pitch to second base. Danny battles in at bat, fouls off a bunch of pitches, and then is able to base hit one down the right field to score him. And then later on, obviously, the other two runs scoring off Rodrigo's uh, wild pitch moves him up to second and third. And, they have their lefty in, and uh, he battles with two strikes and puts it in play, and and we were able to score the run on reading a down angle, and then of course Sarge hits that sixth, uh, the, our, gets our sixth run on the, on the home run. So, you know, credit our offense. I mean, they they really really had some some nice at bats, and uh, but you know at the end of the day, you know you gotta you gotta play a balanced game. You gotta do you know. Usually you got to do two of the three things well. You got to, you know, uh, of the offense, defense, and pitch, and and if not, you got to do all three at, at times. And we just we weren't able to do that today. Hurston, um, Leah Van from the Baton Rouge Advocate, um, you set a school record for 11 strikeouts in an NCAA tournament appearance tonight against one of the top lineups in the country. Um, how do you wrestle that outing? The feelings of how you performed with the loss tonight? Uh, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know, I mean, you can't really focus on the outing when you didn't get the win. I mean, as a team, you know, you want that win and you're fighting for the win. And I mean, at the end of the day, it, you know, you don't win the ball game. So, I mean, we gave it everything we had uh, in the end. We didn't come out on top, but I think every everybody that was on the field tonight gave it every, everything they had. And uh, just, you know, you don't get the outcome you want. You just got to keep going. Person, which stuff was working for you the best tonight? Uh, early on, I would say the slider and the splitter, and then late it was the splitter and the fastball, uh, being able to mix, and then having the slider and the curveball whenever I wanted it. So uh, just kind of having all the pitches working uh, really was able to get me through those innings. Was there any sort of adjustment after the second? Because really from the second inning on, you just cruised. Yeah, like I said earlier, it was just the, having the confidence, going out there with the confidence. and. Just settling down, being loose with everything, uh, just knowing that everything that I had done to this point uh, was going to carry me through this game. So just being confident in what I had. Christopher, uh, what were you seeing from the LSU staff today that you were able to tee off so well? Uh, well, you know, the starter we knew coming to the game, he was fastball heavy. And, you know, early on, he was throwing a lot of fastballs. And I got in there my first bat, and he fed me a fastball, and I was at a, able to be on time for that one. And, you know, I was just coming to the game. I just want to see the ball up. You know, I've been, you know, in the season, you know, my, my downfall is swinging balls down and swinging balls out of the zone. But coming to this game, I just had a good plan with seeing the ball up and seeing it over the middle, and I did. Chris, what, um, first of all, I want some of what you're taking for your bash. <laughs> <laughs> it's working pretty good. Um, what are you having to do every day to get ready to play? I just, you know, I got to come in three, four hours early for the game and get with the trainer and, you know, stretch, do all I can, you know, get on some stem and get my back loose. And, you know, he's taped me up some, some ways that he knew best for, you know, the problems going on. And, you know, just, just having to grind through it, really. I mean, I don't feel the best, but I got to grind through it for my team. Scott, I apologize if you've answered this before, but in that ninth inning, did you feel it starting to slip away or did you feel like you guys still were in – Pretty good control of this guy. No, I, you know, I really, of course, you know, witnessing last night's uh, eighth inning uh, that they had. But, you know, I had, we had our guys that have, have brought us to this dance all, you know, in the game. And, and they've been proven and, and uh, you know, they've been in those situations before. So, 
it'll certainly uh, – we were glad to hand them the ball. They've been very, very successful for us. It's just, you know, obviously as, as the momentum kind of starts swinging a little bit, you just – Kind of hope, man, just hit it to somebody, hit it at somebody. Because it was obvious we weren't able to punch them. I mean, we weren't able to get the strikeouts that Hurston was earlier in the game, and, and we didn't get them late. And, uh, and credit, credit LSU on, on their at-bats and, and being able to, to foul and extend those at-bats and, and then obviously get some pitches that they could hit. Coach, um, coming into this game, you extended a lot of pitching that you more than likely would have not liked. Could you just talk about what the pitching staff is going to look like coming up against Kennesaw, maybe? Well, it's going to be all hands on deck from here on out. I mean, that's you either, you either live for another game or you go home for the summer. So everybody's got to be ready outside of those that, you know, obviously have, have reached their pitch count and are starters, two starters. But... Uh, you know, everybody else, they need to be ready. And, you know, we're at a situation right now, I told them after the game, we're going to have have everybody ready to go. Guys that haven't contributed a whole lot, they, they need to be ready to contribute. And, uh, you know, we're to, to pull this off. And, and But I feel like we can do it. We have time for one more question. Final question. All right, Coach Barry, Christopher, Hurston. Hey, thank you guys for your time.